So, oh, a month today is the Apple Keynote 2023 starting on June 5th. And we're expecting to see the latest iPhone iOS 17 announced with all its new leaked features. However, when is iOS 17's release date for both the beta and the official update time? And what devices will be supported? Well, good news today as I'm going to show you all of these details. So, first of all, if you didn't already, Apple's next WWDC event is set to be in June time. Most years, it's been in the first or second week of June, so expect it to start on June the 5th or June 12th this year in 2023. Early test versions of the software have already been leaked, giving us some ideas of what to expect from the update. There are still hidden features and functions that we don't know about, as iOS updates often include hundreds of tweaks and hundreds of new features, but some key features have been already revealed and I want to talk about them in a moment. But we've been told that Apple's main focus is performance and quality in iOS 17 and also the compatibility with Apple's newest OS called Reality OS, what I'll also talk about. But first, when will we see the first official finished release of iOS 17 to all compatible iPhones? Well, based on the last sort of 10 plus years of history, iOS 17 will be officially released in the fall of 2023, likely in mid-September, a couple of weeks before the iPhone 15 comes out. We're saying this date, for example, as in the last five years, as with say iOS 12, it came out on September 17th, iOS 13 came out on September 19th, iOS 14th, September 16th, iOS 15th, September 20th, and then iOS 16 on September 12th. So as you can see, it is definitely the middle of September. So we're expecting it either week beginning the 11th of September or the 18th when it will come out. However, for beta releases, that is a bit different and it'll be much more earlier on. So starting off with the developer version. Again, last year, WWDC 2022 kicked off on June 6th. And then also we got the first developer's preview of that. And that came out on exactly the same day. So for this year, as WWDC starts on June the 5th, and if you have an Apple developers account, you'll probably be able to get iOS 17 on that day, June 5th. However, for a public beta, it's much more of a far more stable release of that, but you might have to wait about three weeks later. And personally, if you're not a developer, I would say at least wait for the first beta because developer ones are still full of bugs and everything like that. But again, in public beta releases, with iOS 12, it came out on June 25th, iOS 13, June 24th, iOS 14th, July 9th, iOS 15 on June 30th, and then finally iOS 17 on July 12th. Following Apple's pattern here, we can expect that iOS 17's public beta will begin probably week commencing June 26th or July 3rd. But next of all, let's talk about compatible iPhones. So these are the latest iPhones that will be able to run iOS 17. So in the last five years, Apple has been getting rid of their bottom two devices, say, every two years for support. So what I mean by this, so for example, with iOS 13 and all the way up to iOS 15, the oldest devices that could run that current version of iOS was the iPhone 6S, the original iPhone SE, and also both of the iPhone 7 models. But when iOS 16 came along, all of those models got abolished and basically the lowest models was the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 and also the iPhone XR and the XS models. And it's expected for iOS 17 that this will be the same again. Like I said, it's normally that they keep sort of two years of retention of updates on their lowest devices. We had the big sort of wipe away at last year. So this year we're expecting it to stay the same. So I'm probably gonna say most likely the lowest devices again will be the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 and also the XS and also the XR or the 10S. 10R and they will probably be the lowest ones for you but I would say probably next year in 2024 for iOS 18 the lowest device will probably actually be the iPhone 11 models and also the second generation iPhone SE but the good news is you'll get two more sort of years update after that but generally as you can work out here most likely Apple kind of give around about six to seven years of updates of giving them the latest version of iOS 
Also, normally after about a year later after that, Apple still do bring out some bits and pieces, some bug fixes, and also some security updates, but not too much. You won't really get any new features going forwards. But just to make it extra clear for you, if you have an iPhone 8 or 10 or iPhone SE second generation, and above in numbers it is most likely you will get ios 17 this year but next of all let's quickly go over some of the features that we could be expecting to see in ios 17. so first of all the major star of the show at wwdc will probably be the announcement of the mixed reality headset that apple has been working on for ages and it will come out with a brand new os called reality os we've been told that all the other apple os's like ios 17 will be made fully compatible with this new headset and its operating system we've been told that uh, just like the, how the Apple Watch work, we'll probably get an app to kind of control the reality headset. So we'll probably get a reality headset app to configure the headset and also to install apps on the device. Also, iOS 17 will be giving sort of a tethering ability to control the headset too. We have also been told that Apple is introducing a new built-in app called Journal that will track what you do every day and will be exclusive to you to view. It can tell you how long you are spending a week down your local bar or say at your local gym. It can also tell you how many hours you've been spending in the office for example. It's more of an app to keep you aware of how you've been spending your week and where you've been and if it's up to you to make any changes. It also looks like that the control panel will finally have a re-ramp for the first time in around about eight years. So this is basically the control center and this revamp will incorporate the iPhone 14 Pro models, Dynamic Island 2 and future iPhones that will also have this feature. Then we've been told that the wallet app, it will also be getting an update. Mainly the difference here is that your subscription cards, your gift cards and your credit cards will all be separated out to make it easier for you to choose which card you need to use when you need to use them. Next of all is something that we kind of was revealed last year at WWDC and we're expecting more information this year. And that is that Apple provided sort of a preview demo of a new CarPlay experience that had deeper integration with vehicles or newer vehicles that are coming out. And this basically allowed like, for example, that you could sort of change all the screens that like a CarPlay screen or all of your devices this is sort of on your dash in front of you in front of your steering wheel and also everything else too you'd be able to control most of the car's abilities with this so this is for example changing the volume for example changing the heating in your car and other bits and pieces too you'll be able to control that through kind of a car play sort of link and we're expecting to see a far more sort of a deeper preview and also probably the first cars to get this in 2023 and again all of this integration will be built right into ios 17 so your car if you get one of these new cars will depend quite a lot on your iphone for this then next of all the next update we're probably going to see is more of a rule that apple needs to comply to due to the european union saying that the ability to sideload apps must come to all smartphones by early 2024 as the iPhone is a smartphone and also the iOS 18 won't come out till June 2024 so it's a bit later on in the year it means that Apple need to basically bring sort of the side loading ability into iOS 17 or say basically in a later version of iOS 17 before the year is out and otherwise Apple need to make a hard decision to stop selling the iPhone in Europe otherwise but I don't think Apple will want to do that because obviously it does make a a big margin of their profits so i think apple will just have to comply to this rule from the european union so we could actually see side loading app stores possible and inside that people will be able to make their own apps not adhering fully to sort of apple's app store rules and it probably could mean that we could have more customization abilities on your phone but at the same time as well it does also mean that there's possible but sort of you could have misleading apps 
viruses maybe i'm not too sure how apple are gonna sort of tackle this but the other side of it is that you will be able to probably put more sort of third party sort of apps on there so for example if you are like an emulator fan um, you won't have to sort of like jailbreak your phone anymore you'd just be able to just put it straight on there from a side loading app so yeah there are swings and roundabouts on this one but it looks like that this is probably going to be coming in ios 17. Well guys, that is the latest news and rumours, what we know about for iOS 17. What do you guys think? I would love to know your opinions in the comments below. And if also, if you've enjoyed watching this video, please do press the like button. And also, please also remember to press the subscribe button and also hit that notification bell to get the latest Apple news, reviews and comparisons. Until next time guys, I will see you really soon. Bye bye.